The Eucharist is profound, mysterious, dynamic, inviting, merciful. Holiness is possible. Your First Communion was a historic event. As we explore the history of the Eucharist, it's critically important to keep in mind that you have a place in that history, and it all began with your First Communion. Some of us remember our First Communion, and some of us don't. Some people have humorous stories to tell, and many people wish they had had been better prepared. One of the best First Communion stories I have ever heard is by Sister Helena Burns in the book, Beautiful Eucharist. The title of her story is, Why I Lied to My Pastor About First Communion. It is funny and it is profound and it is a must read, but I digress. The first time you received Jesus in the Eucharist was a historic moment. You stepped into a 2000 year history of men and women participating in Eucharistic glory. You became part of an eternal community that includes angels and saints who all come to the table for this one meal. You receive Jesus into your body and soul in the most intimate way for the first time. Whether you receive the Eucharist for the first time at seven or 70, that first time is just the beginning of the rest of your life. Every time you receive Jesus from that point forward, you have a chance to have a powerful encounter with the Alpha and the Omega. Therese of Lazur was intimately aware of this reality. She had been beautifully prepared for her first communion by her parents who themselves ended up becoming saints. She wrote a wonderful reflection on her own first communion. It teaches us to make every encounter with Jesus count. At last, the most wonderful day of my life arrived, and I can remember every tiny detail of those heavenly hours. My joyous waking up at dawn, the tender reverent kisses of the other girls, the room where we dressed, filled with the white snowflakes in which, one after another, we were clothed, and above all, our entry into chapel and the singing of the morning hymn, O altar of God, where the angels are hovering. Nothing will transform your experience of the Eucharist like harnessing the power of anticipation. More than 50% of the joy of any great venture in life comes from anticipation. When you plan a great vacation, get ready for a first date, prepare for the birth of your child. So much of the joy comes before you ever even have the experience. One of the greatest temptations around the Eucharist is to treat it like a regular part of our routine instead of the most significant moment of our week. And the way to move beyond that spiritual obstacle is to begin to build anticipation. Throughout the week, prepare for Mass by praying the spiritual communion each day, by reflecting on the gospel for the coming Sunday's Mass, by fasting in order to intentionally become mindful of the hunger in your soul, and by arriving a few minutes early to quiet your heart, mind, body, and soul before Mass begins. We prepare for everything we consider to be important in this life. Preparation builds anticipation, and anticipation fills our souls with joy. When we don't prepare for Mass, we reveal our misplaced priorities and rob ourselves of so much of the joy God wants to give us through the Eucharistic experience. Trust, surrender, believe, receive. I'd love to send you a copy of Beautiful Eucharist with Sister Helena Burns' story, Why I Lied to My Pastor about First Communion. Become a member of the International Society of the Eucharist today and we will send you 
a copy of Beautiful Eucharist, along with a free copy of 33 Days Eucharistic Glory, a copy of the children's version, a copy of the limited edition journal, which includes the amazing Holy Week retreat. Click the button below and join now. Have a great day and remember, be bold, be Catholic. We are people of the Eucharist. Jesus. I believe that you are truly present in the most holy sacrament of the Eucharist. Every day, I long for more of you. I love you above all things. And I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot receive you sacramentally at this moment, I invite you to come and dwell in my heart. May this spiritual communion increase my desire for the Eucharist. You are the healer of my soul. Take the blindness from my eyes, the deafness from my ears, the darkness from my mind, and the hardness from my heart. Fill me with the grace, wisdom, and courage to do your will in all things. My Lord and my God, draw me close to you, nearer than ever before. Amen. Consecrate America to the Eucharist. Bye-bye. Have a great day. Have a great day. Have a great day. <laughs> Hey Isabel, one simple way to be mindful of God's presence in the world is to know where the nearest tabernacle is. So while we've got a couple of minutes, I thought we might work on your geography a little. Sounds good, Dad. You're always coming up with something. If I was at a latitude of 34.06 and a longitude of negative 118.24, where would I find the nearest tabernacle? Our Lady of Angels, Los Angeles, California.